Hey, welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Fourier series. Let us go ahead. What we can see here is just the graph of the function. The definition of the function as a pieces of other function is not given. So let us determine that first. Okay, since this is the graph of the function, what is the function defined by? The function is defined by this f of x equal to. We can see that the um, interval here is from minus pi to pi. That's one. And also, the function is odd. Is it odd? Yes. The function is odd. Why is it odd? Remember what we said about odd functions in my previous video. All functions are symmetrical about the origin. Okay? So if I rotate this graph at an angle of 180 degrees, the picture I'm seeing now is the picture I will see when the graph is rotated at that angle. Okay? So you can watch my video on even an odd function so you understand better what I'm saying. But the function is an odd function because it is symmetrical about the origin. That is, if it is turned at an angle of 180 degrees, the exact picture we are seeing here is the same picture of the graph that will appear when it is rotated at that very angle. So, remember that for an odd function, we only need the Fourier coefficient b sub n. For an odd function, a naught and a sub n are zero. That is it. So, Let's define it since it is from minus pi to pi. But we can take it as a pieces. From minus pi to zero, what is f of x? From minus pi to zero, f of x is minus two. Look at it. From minus pi to zero, it is minus two. So f of x is equal to minus two when minus pi is less than x and x is less than zero. Also, from 0 to pi, between x equal to 0 and x equal to pi, what is f of x? We can see it here. It is 2. So between 0 and pi, f of x is equal to 2. So 2 between 0 and what? Pi. That is 0 less than x, less than pi. So the interval is from minus pi to pi. That is the range. From minus pi to pi. So, over the range from minus pi to pi, generally, b sub n is 1 over pi times the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x sine nx dx. Remember, I said we don't need the Fourier coefficient a naught and a sub n because for an odd function, those two coefficients are zero. And the Fourier series will contain sine terms only. So, this is it for B sub n. But, since the function here is odd, the function is what? Is odd. And sine nx is also odd. So, odd times odd is even. Is that also? We said it in the previous video that odd function times odd function will produce an even function. So, for an even function that is symmetrical, along the y-axis or about the y-axis it means that if we the the area of one side is the same as the area of the other side so instead of taking the full range we can take half of the range let's say from zero to pi then we double it you get the point so for this very function now b sub n will be this two over pi times the integral from 0 to pi, okay, of f of x sine nx dx. This is what we are using for b sub n. So let's go ahead now. That means we are going to take the integral from this 0 to pi alone. That's the point. So b sub n now is equal to 2 over pi into 0 to pi, that's the interval here, 0 to pi, what's f of x? Okay, from 0 to pi, f of x is 2, we said it earlier, from 0 to pi, it is 2, 
So 2 sin nx dx. So let's proceed now. This is the 2 can come out. I will have 4 over pi into what is the integral of sin nx dx? Integrate the sine function to obtain the negative cosine. Right? So we have minus cos nx over n. We are integrating from 0 to pi. 0 to pi. So b sub n is what? 4 over pi into... Okay, this n can actually come out. And the minus can come out as well. So we have minus 4 over n pi. You get the point? So we are having those cos nx from 0 to pi. That is the point. So let's take that limit now. So pi will enter for x first. We have cos n pi. Then 0 will enter for x. We have minus. Okay. 0 will enter. That's cos 0. 0 times n, 0. Cos 0 is equal to 1. And take note for cos n pi, cos n pi, cos n pi is actually equivalent to minus 1 raised to the power n. Yes, we can test it. Plug in 1 for n. So we have cos pi. 1 times pi is pi. Okay, so we have cos 180 degrees. Pi is 180 degrees. Cos 180 degrees is minus 1. Plug in 1 here. Minus 1 raised to the power 1. It's going to give minus 1. That's the point. So, cos 180 is minus 1. Minus 1 to the power of 1 is what? Is minus 1. If we check 2, cos 360 degrees. Because n is 2 and pi is 180. So, 2 times 180 is 360. Cos 360 degrees is 1. Yes. So, if you plug in 2 here, minus 1 is to the power 2 is 1. So they, they, are, they are equivalent or they are the same. So we can just plug in minus 1 is power n. That's minus 4 over n pi into minus 1 to the power of n minus 1. So let us determine the behavior of b sub n at different values of n. Okay? So when n equal to 1, for example, when n equal to 1, b1. This is b sub n, that's b sub 1, will be equal to minus 4 over pi into, if you plug in 1 here, you have minus 1, minus 1. And what will this be? Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2, times minus 4, that's 8 over pi. When n equal to 2, plug in 2 here. We have b2 equal to minus 4 over 2 pi, okay, into, if you put 2 here, minus 1 squared is 1, positive 1, 1 minus 1. And this will give us 0, everything. So the point is, for every even number of n, I will plug into this b sub n, it's going to be 0. We just plug in 2, and we got 0. If you plug in 4 here, Minus 1 is about 4 is still 1, positive 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So everything becomes 0. Plug in 10 to be 1 minus 1, 0. So plug in any even number into this b sub n for n, it will be 0. So we don't need even numbers again since it's going to produce a b sub n equal to 0. But for odd numbers, it will not become 0. All odd numbers 1, 3, 5, and so on. If we plug in 3, for example, we plug in 3, b3 will be equal to minus 4 over 3 pi. This will still be minus 1, minus 1. That is minus 2. So what will this be? 8 over 3 pi for b3. So the point is that for n equal to odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, B sub n will exist and B sub n will be equal to 8 over n pi. That is it. 
check it now where n is equal to one it was eight over one pi which is pi where n equal to three eight over three pi so where n equal to five it will be eight over five pi because if you put five here minus one is about five is minus one so this bracket will always be minus two for all n that are odd numbers you get the point so b5 will be what 8 over 5 pi and so on and so forth so what is the Fourier series now to represent this very function okay let's see remember to hit on the subscribe button like the video and share it with your friends and to your classmates so for an odd function that will contain only sign terms yes if it contains sign terms only the Fourier series will be equal to take note a sub n a naught as zero so we are going straight to the summation from n equal to one to infinity okay of b sub n sine n x so f of x be equal to when n equal to one what's b one eight over pi that would be 8 over pi sine 1x, which is sine x. For 2, n equal to 2, it is 0. So for theory, this is what we have. 8 over 3 pi. 8 over 3 pi sine theory x. Plus, for n equal to 5, 8 over 5 pi sine 5x. Okay? For 7, 8 over 7 pi sine 7x, seven and so on, and so forth. Okay, so this is it now. f of x is equal to 8 over pi is common to all the terms in that function. So I can bring 8 over pi out. Open a bracket. We'll be having what? Sine x here. 1 over 3 sine 3x. Three 1 over 5 sine 5x 1 over 7 sine 7x If you like, you can add 1 over 9 to it sine 9x to infinity So this is the Fourier series to represent this very function So that was the graph what, what we had here initially That was the graph of this um, odd function and this is the Fourier series to represent the function so this is it for this particular question i hope you enjoyed the video keep supporting by subscribing to this channel like the video and share it to your friends and to your classmates all right there are still a lot of videos to come up in the future just keep following i'll see you in the next one